Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I am doing another 10 minute watercolor painting video. The point of this series is to help you get into a regular art practice. It feels a lot easier to tackle a 10 minute painting rather than feeling like you have this big project ahead of you and you'll just never get it done. So this is to help you at least sit down and complete some things that you feel that sense of accomplishment. It's really challenging in today's world where we just have so many things that we have to commit our time to, but if art is important to you, I'm hoping that this series will encourage you to continue drawing, painting, whatever kind of art it is that you do. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. So with this painting, I did pre-mix my sort of yellow orange color and I am painting a yellow tomato. I thought a fruit or a vegetable uh, simplified would be fairly easy to do quickly. So, and I was thinking a yellow tomato is a little different from a red tomato. So I went with that. The reference image I used as always is linked in the description. It's from unsplash.com. Go ahead and take a look if you're interested. Photographers post really lovely work on there that is copyright free. So I am using my fan brush, which I have not used in a very long time. This brush actually has some sentimental value for me because it belonged to my Grammy. And she was also an artist, as you may guess, <laughs> since she had paint brushes. But you can tell it's a little old because even when it's wet, some of the bristles fray out. But it still is quite functional and works well for creating clean edges. So that's why I used it and it can cover quite a bit of area all at once. And then of course I transitioned for the more detailed work at the top into using my size four round tip brush. I use it in every painting. If you've seen any of my other videos, it's probably not a surprise. So uh, that's uh, just works so great for any type of detail and smaller work, even larger work, I will use it, turn it on its side. But anyhow, this helped me get some of those lines. I did try, even though I was working quickly, to maintain the highlights. So essentially the white and light areas of the tomato so that it would have dimensionality. That is a key component of drawings and paintings is you wanna have a full scale of your darkest darks and your lightest lights. So especially with watercolor, it's very important to maintain those. Now, since I was painting pretty fast, some of those did wind up getting covered up where there should have been really light portions and that's okay. Again, just a reminder with these you're most likely not going to kick out a super realistic masterpiece. I know I've said that in other videos in this series, but I just, again, want it to be a reminder. Don't put pressure on yourself and feel like, ugh, I have to have everything perfect because no, in 10 minutes, you're most likely not going to reach that unless you're some sort of protege. And if you are, good for you. That's awesome. But I'm just going in and you can tell kind of the lines of the tomato you can see i'm trying to keep those light highlights where the grooves happen and where the light hits and the colors i'm using in case you're interested i mixed up some cadmium yellow medium which is the fifth color down from the top on the left side on my paint palette and then also cadmium red light which is the third one up from the bottom on the left side in my paint palette so i did a mix of those more yellow than the red because obviously red has a higher chroma so it's going to take less of it to create a sort of yellowy orange now i will admit that this was actually the second tomato i painted i did one another one 10 minutes and i made the mistake sometimes i do this where i'm like this is fine i'll just get through it and i don't need to pre-mix my colors and i realized that i should have because i was trying to mix on the paper itself by just layering colors over each other and while that can have a certain amount of success and there's nothing wrong with doing that if you have a very particular color in your image that you can't is not well achieved with any single color that already exists in your paint palette, it's probably a good idea to pre-mix it ahead of time. So hence why I did a second round of this painting. I still kept to the 10 minutes and I had pre-mixed 
color and it turned out much better. So I went ahead and did that work for you. So you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to try and worry about it, but just maintaining the round shape you really want to have your darker colors really on the bottom and maybe towards one side, depending on where the light is coming from. Obviously, if the light is coming directly from over the top, then most of your rounded dark shadows are going to be at the bottom. But this one looks like the light's coming a little bit from the top right of, of the page, just based on the referenced image I use. So hence, you have a bigger highlight on the right side. Of the tomato and you're gonna have a few more shadows over on that left side and then the sort of reflective light you can see also on that left side of course as things start curving away from you your darkest dark is not gonna be on the very edge it's gonna start lightening a little bit because that is what creates the curve and this is getting a little more into sort of the shape and theory of art, but you can probably find tons of videos and instructional things like that online, YouTube, I'm sure there are websites that go into it as well. So I won't go, I won't spend too much time on that here, but in case you're interested in more of those kind of sort of shape and theory and things with art, um, hey, if you want, let me know and I can go into some more of those details in other videos. But for now, I am starting into the shadow. Of course, you don't want your tomato just floating in empty space. <laughs> I mean, you could, but I, I decided to ground this tomato. So I used some cadmium red medium. It really did, interestingly enough, the image, it's on a white surface, but the shadow itself right at the base looked fairly red. And I think that's just because it's a orangey yellow tomato. And in that reflective surface, it was much darker and therefore looked red. Adding a little bit of yellow as well. And here I'm using a much larger round tip brush. It's a size eight. So it's double the size of the normal one I use, but I just felt like that would help me cover ground a little quicker. And the fan brush just was because some of the bristles were separating. It wasn't creating that smooth field of color I needed for the shadow. So I used this one instead. I did want to add some black in there because the shadow is very dark right at the base where it touches the surface it's sitting on. And of course, I'm back to my finer tip, round tip brush. And for this set, I do wind up, as I did in my last 10 minute watercolor video, I went ahead and worked for about six more minutes after I had finished the 10 minutes just to show you, and I will have images at the end, of what you can do in just even a few more minutes to make your piece look or feel a little more finished. So again, you this is up to you. You can spend as much time as you want. If you want just 10 minutes, great. Then that's that's what you dedicate. Otherwise, if you feel like I could go a little further and make this look a little more finished or I would feel a little happier with it, then you can go five more minutes, 10 more minutes, however long you're able to fit in. And I will have to apologize because the images at the end I had spaced out on taking a photo of this first round of the tomato at the end of the 10 minutes. I forgot to take a photo of it. So I did wind up having to just take a screenshot uh, from the video footage and it's not as high quality as the scan of the tomato I did after 15 minutes. So I apologize for that. So it's not gonna be the exact greatest comparison between okay at end of 10 minutes and at end of 15 minutes but I think you'll still get the idea of how much more in just even a few more minutes I mean 16 minutes I said 15 but at the end of 16 minutes how different it looked it, it really felt like to me a drastic change oops <laughs> keep doing that. I've done that in a few videos where I, I'm just working so fast I accidentally dropped my brush. I am going in and adding a little bit of red for the shadows on the actual tomato. Uh, a lot of the time shadows themselves, depending on the color of the shape art, they're not going to be a pure gray or blackish brown. They're going to have lots of actual color in them and so hence why the shadows on this are more of those deep reds and 
orangey golds. And I did wind up, like I said, kind of accidentally painting over some of that space that should have been kept white. So I was trying to go back and lift some of that paint off and then re-add the color. So when I added at the end of the 10 minutes, in that six more minutes that I worked on the tomato, I did wind up using a little bit of colored pencil to get some of that white back. And that is perfectly valid. You know, I think pe uh, colored pencil over watercolor works really great for filling in some of those details, especially if you're doing fur. And I know, of course, I hope a tomato does not have fur. This tomato does not have fur, but I'm <laughs> just talking in the hypothetical. If you do something with fur, colored pencil over watercolor can be great for those details. And then quickly adding my signature, which was very light. I didn't quite get it dark enough. So there you can see it at the end of the 10 minutes. Again, sorry, it's not the highest quality image because I had to do a screenshot. And then there you can see it just a little bit further. I did darken my signature quite a bit because it was so light. And now you see the two side by side. So you can really, for just like six more minutes, really, really push it further. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified whenever I post something new. And I'll see you in the next video.